Let's go. Sanbonani Makaya, Sanbonani Makaya. We are back. This is the producer's talk. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We're seeing you. I buy and get a and buy and get a buzz alone. Come in, come through. Come one, come all. Ninga Yatelan in Zosbona song. Um, please sing at Quality Stadium. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me, guys? Please confirm uh, so that we know that when we start, we just roll. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. You can hear me. Yeah. 
Everyone at home, can you hear me? Tanzania is here, can you hear me? Texas is here, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Josie, can you hear me? Josie, can you hear me? Are you there? Oh, yes, I'm here. Sorry. <laughs> Just stepped off the mic a bit. <laughs> can you put a green view? Uh, I don't let everyone see as if we can see each other. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's go um yes thank you so much guys for coming through um uh, i can see you're hearing us loud and clear um this is the day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and discuss and be glad in it um uh i see they're saying there's more than 10 producers from tanzania uh, you guys can hear me clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, today we are taking a different turn. Um, um, uh, we we used to do this thing, actually, <laughs> I don't know how to put it, but we used to do it in our spare time where when I'm with uh, Josie and Lebu and Lulu and, uh, and the other guys would... Um, uh, play some music and and just uh, review review what we're looking at at the time and review songs review whatever I mean I remember the last time we traveled when we went for a workshop in 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 Bulukwan that we did last year I mean we played probably the whole entire iTunes music actually and we were just going through sounds and music seeing um, what is it that we like. And we were just checking each other and challenging each other and to a level it is and of making sure that um, trying to find out actually that we are, are we hearing the same thing when you're at home and discussing mixes, discussing all of those things. <clears throat> so today we've, we, we're going to start smooth. Um, we've got a lot of questions that came through in our inboxes, crazy stuff, beautiful questions. And um, unfortunately, some of the questions, uh, we have answered them on the other episodes, like episode one, and probably let someone will ask a question today, and we've answered that question earlier on, on one of the episodes. So we kindly request that uh, from time to time, just go back and refer there and um, just check them out. Um, we are available on, on, on YouTube, for the YouTube channel, theproducers.com, the producers talk. Um, Facebook, the producers talk, uh, Instagram, the producers talk. I know some of you have been requesting that we send the v we put the videos, we upload the videos on Instagram. Yes, we're still chopping them because they're quite long and the IGTV can only go to 15 minutes. So <clears throat> we're trying to put up uh, proper clips that will at least be nice within the 15 minutes. Um, so um, we we are grateful of this opportunity and we thank you so much for tuning in as well. We just want to say thank you to Crotchet Music, um, Baselia uh, uh, um, uh, and, and um, Ocreo. Um, those are our partners and, and we've got a company that is, that is doing our social media, uh, LT Branding House check it out. I'm sure you have seen uh, some improvements there and we are trying as much as we can to make sure that we give you a good good standard. So um, so yeah, so let's start, let's start, let's start. Let me share my screen. There's a song that, there's a song that uh, Joseph bumped into recently and um, <clears throat> And um, and he's been telling us about it. We see there's UK, there's UK in the house. We see you guys. Thank you so much. Um, um, I've already acknowledged Texas and yeah. So there's a song, there's a song that Josie bumped into and um, we want to start there uh, for the next seven minutes. Let's just listen to it. Uh, tell us what you think. Um, and yeah, well, it's the first time I'm hearing it. Me and Lebo, first time hearing it. So we'll, we'll listen to it and then, and then take it from there and then maybe review a bit. And in, Maybe I don't know. I don't know if I'm right, guys. If I put it, I phrase it this way: if 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 you guys would love us to review maybe your work, 
uh, maybe say good DVD is at a DVD stage already, or maybe it's still audio, and uh, you wouldn't mind us um, uh, reviewing it here live. And and obviously, if you know that you are strong in the Lord, you won't take offense. Or oh, Nati, we might not sound uh, because when we review, obviously, we we you know we we take out some things. Um, so I'm just hoping that uh, if if you feel you are strong in the Lord and you would really love to hear our inputs, uh, please please make sure that the person who's requesting that is the it's either he's the owner of the album or he's the artist, or he's the, an executive producer, or the producer. Just make sure that you do all the, the, the background and make, get all approvals. Because when we come here, obviously, then we will, we will leave no stone unturned. We will really go through. And unfortunately, maybe we might not say, you know, other stuff the way maybe you are. But we are trusting that we'll... But at the end of the day, it's not really criticizing. It's all building and say, look, maybe next time fix this, fix that. It's just that now maybe how we will say it, uh, it might not sit well in the spirit. So we are only asking for those who are strong in the Lord. And and um, and and yes, let me share the screen. Let me know if you see this. Uh, let me go and share and share and share and share. So this is this is on YouTube. Uh, this is on YouTube. Let me look for it quickly. Um, this is on YouTube. Where where is that thing? Uh, okay, cool. Let me go there. I'm sharing my screen. Um, let me open my browser. Okay, right. So this song is uh, called "You Are" by Tiffany uh, Tiffany Joy. I think it's Tifa Joy. Uh, you are. So let's listen to the song and then let's 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 go. Seven minutes.
Sorry about that. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. YouTube ads and all that. Okay, let's let's go. Um, and there's absolutely nothing you can do. <laughs> Josie, I'm not going to start with you. Let me go to Lebu, um, and then we'll come back to me, and then we'll go to you because you have listened to the song and you felt, whew, yeah, no. Oh, no, I just listened to a beautiful thing right there. Uh, Lebs, are you healthy enough? Are you strong enough? Are you strong in the Lord to, <laughs> to say something? <laughs> Give us more of your mic. We are unable to hear you. How is this? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Oh, my, my uncle is a pro. He can keep him away. Yeah, but. Yeah, I don't need to, but you want to say something more in Jean? I just take it while we're still soaking in the spirit, and then, then 30 minutes later, so boy. <laughs> I think we need a break, guys. What, what do you think? What do you think? We need a break here. Um, woo! But yeah. How do you feel? Um, yo. Man, okay. before I... I, I, uh, I think, let me just deal with the, the, the production. Um, just so that I can come down from the <laughs> spirit vibes, you know? <laughs> This is something that I've noticed, um, and I think uh, if you were paying attention, you have also noticed. Uh, mm. But this song has about eight minutes intro. It's an eight, uh, eight second intro. It's eight seconds. Yeah. Eight seconds. Like, this is like they start singing with immediate e effect. Like, as soon as we color something, they start singing, you know, and I think which is one of the very important things in production and when putting together a song, um, how you introduce the song is very important, you know, um, mm. because what they did, um, their intro makes it, gives you a curiosity of what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And before you're still trying to figure out what's happening in the intro, they are already singing, meaning there's not, you don't even have time to even get tired of what you are hearing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the important things. Um, even over the years, myself and yeah, with you guys, we, we've had these discussions about intros, whereby back then one could do a good one minute to two minute intro, you know? Mm -hmm. um, by the time a person starts singing, hey, people are already tired the listener is already tired you know yeah. and besides the one of the issues we've always had was that after doing such a long intro when you submit your music at a radio station or at a uh, tv station um they always say don't you have a shorter version 
the mm-hmm. minute we have something that starts with fire, you know, um, when they say that actually they are trying to point to us that uh, that intro is showing our airplay, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I noticed with this that eight seconds, they do so much in that eight seconds, but it's not too long and it's not even too short and it makes sense and it's aligned with the song you know so one of the things that we would do even in our production i mean you can all one one could always do take a a section in a song take a section in a song whereby it's a turnaround say for example take a turnaround of a song so you don't have to come up with a very complicated uh, intro. You know, we've done that. We've done that, and I think we have all learned that <laughs> all these complicated intros sometimes they don't work out for our best, you know, for our good. You know? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so a snippet, a small part of a, of a song that says this is the direction we are taking with the song, you know, and. You just, it's an introduction. That's why they call it intro. It's an introduction. You're saying this is the direction we are going. We're not going to uh, travel on a gravel road. We're going to travel on a tar road. So, the kind of, if the song is a tar road kind of a, a song, you know, the intro should be in that level as well. You know, if it's a tender kind of a song, now I'm going into details now. If it's a tender kind of a song, I'm not going to put together an intro that is more urban and contemporary, whereas the song is now a tender song, you know? So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I think (laughs) I've kind of like tried to put, to sum it up, the whole intro thing. Yeah. Look, um, there's a whole lot of things happening in my head. I'm I'm, I'm somewhere else though. but what you've just said, I mean, is exactly what I would say. I mean, these are the discussions we are having all the time. So, um, again, guys, uh, 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 long intros really. Uh, this is this is what I this is what I was taught by Mtunzi Number back in the days when I first met him. He said to me, "The intro, the intro should give. It's either that your intro is going to tell you one the 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 feel and the texture of the song, or or it will hint." where we are going um, and or it should give you a part that is in the song that you're probably going to stay maybe going to, you're going to turn around in that sec in that section so so if we go back and review uh, our our um, some of our South African music and um, listen to the intros some intros are not saying anything about the song they are I, they are some i feel some of them, even mine as well even some of my <laughs> productions my, my older pro- productions i think album uh album two three album up uh, between album one and ten somewhere there because where are we now i think album 20 something so somewhere there in the in the tenth in the tenth categories i remember i used to really 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 do long intros my intros were, were were very long and they were not making sense so as you grow then you realize that how how important is the intro but again i've always i've i've always listened to it even though sometimes i don't do it maybe because i do a lot of live recording so some intros i'm not just using them as intros of the song i'm just i'm just joining songs when you do a call and respond, when you do a call and respond, because most of the time the call and respond songs, they quite take long, Jay. They just take long. The, the section, the section, especially the first section will take really long before you get to the to the nicer part. If you heard she's saying, you are gone, Congo. you that's very long. That's very long for me. So Sometimes I don't need the intro because I feel like we're going to be sitting in a nice place, which is very quiet. I don't need the intro. That eight seconds thing, I think it worked perfectly. And obviously the pickup point is those Tom's beautiful mix. I think the mix is amazing. I'm just not sure about the, the lead singers, the lead singers, specifically the RX one, the lead singers, Mike. Um, I'll probably jump into later on when when we are offline and just go through nicely but i'm not sure but the the the, the eq there 
um but beautiful song or maybe it could be the mic maybe the mic i don't know um but i'm not i'm not fully 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 convinced backing vocals sitting perfectly beautiful mix nice and bright um um nice and bright the balance where they are sitting i can hear pretty much i think the this this mix for me for today is the best mix i've listened to thirdly um well arranged it grows the song grows and there's there's nice sections and there's less ish. oh what is my pinda lengua man it's just beautiful it's just beautiful for me everything is sitting perfectly um i love where it ends I've, i'm i'm a fan of bringing bringing the 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 the, the the juice the juice of the song i mean after arranging the song or after writing the song you know the juice is where you know the you see my god no and there's absolutely nothing that's the juice of the song for me not just the words i'm just talking about the melody the melody of that part because it just breaks that that monotonous uh, call and respond thing and it just breaks it nicely go back to that thing sit on it at the end and the young into the mix of the voices makes the beauty now and the phrasing how they're phrasing the song i think it's amazing lastly uh uh oof. <laughs> yeah the truth uh, the truth is the visuals are not nice and and there's i think there's a collective of things that are making them not to be nice look we can see the faces quite clean i don't think let's assume let's assume it was uh, uh um uh, uh it's not a 4k let's just say it's not a 4k it's not a 1080 is a uh sd or whatever it it looks okay but i think what 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 makes the visuals not to look nice is the bad lighting for me the lighting is terrible when she raises her hand i can see a lot of uh the the shadow so i, I think um uh, whoever was doing lighting it's, it's unfortunately i don't think he did an amazing job um the color is too much there's too much color the positioning of the lighting is right on the faces of people people are red um someone once taught me that you know if you, if you see the light in your there's just the shadows in your at lago my shoulders in your, it just looks amazing and a bit of it on your hair i just feel like here uh, the lighting wasn't 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 perfect that so my review of the song beautiful beautiful mix uh beautiful arrangement beautiful song beautiful atmosphere uh uh, uh mix uh, the visuals no no lyric co- lyric content lyric content lastly lastly number 5 lyric content yeah it perfect are cool I'm, I'm i'm i think i enjoy one liners two liners three liners songs you know i don't I, I, i don't i don't enjoy songs that have a lot of words and all of that just personally i i i love repetition repetition is my thing i just enjoy that uh don't give me too much just give me less let me understand where you're going and lastly lastly to the artists this is what i always go through with when i produce singers um I feel sometimes when you do a, a quiet I think the simple liner songs you know the songs that are repetitive are, are a bit of a problem most of the time they need a singer that reads the word so that you are able to give us that more content and and just give us direction of of what you're talking about just just making it bigger I feel I feel the singer is just an amazing singer she's brilliant um uh, uh up there when she goes towards the end of the song beautiful beautiful words she's she's quoting scriptures she's talking she's quoting characters in the bible um uh it's beautiful you can hear that this person reads the word uh or she probably wrote everything down but i just feel like she memorized it well if she if she did that but it just sounds like this person is 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 uh, uh, uh she she has time she has she has a secret place jose how do you feel you like you reviewed everything <laughs> I was I being the full review of what I'm saying but yeah yeah no I hear you um I don't know I, I don't know if I should start with what I don't like or with what I like um okay let me start here I'm I'm I had I have a general no uniform policy person yeah. I'm not a fan of uniforms yes uh, uh however uh, as a as a as an anti uniform 
believer. I think the artist could have done better from a dress code perspective. Mm. There's, there's a bit of uh, challenges going on there. Um, but anyway, and I, what you said about visuals, yeah, I, the, the visuals are not happening. But I think they they intentionally put those lyrics on top of it just as distractions. Distract. So that, I think I think that was a smart move they did because they they yeah they put some blurs in and the lyrics are throwing you off so you you don't really notice which is why even even her dress code doesn't stick out as much so I thought I whoever edited it was was a smart one I think that was a cool idea to put those lyrics the way he did uh-huh. uh, hey man this mix <laughs> I don't know what's happening with that drum room from the beginning man uh, <laughs> from the from the opening, it's like, oh my god! <laughs> like, if you just hit space bar and it starts and you stop, you already know that this mix is serious. It's a uh, uh, nah. I think I think they really nailed it on a very serious level. Uh, obviously, the band is very serious, bro. Uh, whoever put that together is is on it. Uh, I heard the mic thing. Uh, it could be it could be the mic itself, the mic selection, but I think there's also something about her tone that has frequencies that are might might be a bit complicated to isolate. So I I felt like the there was a sort of a struggle, especially as it keeps going up. You you hear that there it it's re, it, it really gets lost. Um, but those are just the stuff I don't like. Um, writing style. Uh, I think it's a very cool, well-written song. Uh, different to you, however, I, I actually love songs with a lot of lyrics mm-hmm. um, because I feel like uh, I, I'm a fan of hymns. I, I, I'm from a hymns school of thought. So uh, I just love it when you make your point and you keep hitting me back to back with big points. But somehow they, they managed to pull it off with with few words and, and 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 you can tell they they it's a it's a black writing style there's a i don't know <laughs> if you you notice there's there's this tendency in writing that is common in black people where you put a big big point and and then you repeat it <laughs> so mm-hmm. you see how they they start with with you are god and then absolutely not and then they come back now with harmonies uh it's it's like what Marvin Sepp did remember praise him in advance uh <laughs> I had my shit and then the band comes in and says it again uh Travis Green does the same thing you see all oh, still here it's it's like it's common in in black writing even in South Africa that's what we do um yeah it's it's, it's not my favorite thing to do but it works in this case especially because the harmonies oh the harmonies are brilliant bro they the singers are are on it. They, their dynamics, you you can't miss their dynamics. As 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 the song grows, you hear them grow with it. But the part that blows my mind is when they come back from that highest point, you yeah, and when she drops it, texturally mm. feel the drop, and it's like, poof, they got it right. Vocal arrangement, beautiful. Uh, but yeah, I think the most outstanding thing has to be what you said the lead vocalist. Um, One thing, first thing, she paces herself. uh, And I think Mm -hmm. most vocalists should pay attention to this, especially in a beautiful country, because there's a tendency in in, in lead vocalists to not plan for the length of the song. And you find that it's a five minute song, but by minute two, you've already hit the highest register your voice can reach. And so by the time you, you get to minute five, you've really done a disservice because there isn't a lot of room you have to do that. So she, she, she paces herself nicely. She starts quietly building it up gently. By the time you get to the end, you're not really tired of listening to it. It's like she can still keep going. And, and again, uh, word content. Like she, she's not, um, she's not like the, the tradition. There's this thing again <laughs> in ad libs, uh, and and I understand because in South Africa we come from a culture where our music didn't have ad libs, so you know our our songs were originally written 
ad libs were written into the song it's because it, it was choir music it's like mori mori boka we na mo you know the the lead is written into the music uh but no yeah na that that type of thing so i think in a way it did a disservice to us because now most lead vocalists now they just cue the next part that's coming and they just memorize one or two words if it's a sutu song they're going to say koboshiani you know if it's an english song there's way maker you know it's a, it's a vibe we have standardized words but you can tell that she she went deep into this i mean i saw her make a reference to ezekiel you are the wheel within a wheel i'm like that's that's a very remote scripture for most people and 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 that that theological structure of of how the the books represent christ uh that that was also very impressive and and i think something i would encourage to most singers that start going deep in the word uh not just not just to memorize parts of it so that you can use them in a song but for your benefit also uh, because your worship becomes authentic when mm. it is built upon the foundation of the word of god mm. but hey man this this is this is a, by the way mutswedi is the one who who introduced me to the song yeah. it's a a big big song man um beautifully done uh uh yeah the only thing is just that those few things but i really don't fault anything in it i think for the the cool thing about them is that i think they are conscious of their shortcomings so mm. for every shortcoming they have they have something to cover it up and that's, yeah. that's the brilliance of it because 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 i think one of the one of our limitations is that we we for instance if you don't have a budget in your production mm-hmm. production shows that you don't have a budget but i think somehow they find a way to to kind of manage their limitations and 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 so as a result even though we are like there there's too much pink on red on people's faces but that won't stop us from listening to the song because they found ways to cover it up they they maximized on the things that matter cut on the things that that don't and really just gave us a very awesome production so yeah my take on it it's it's a dope song i don't know if yeah. i should but it's amazing yeah i think i think i think as well uh, obviously obviously we're still going to have um other videos coming up and other guests that um we feel they are going to give us a, a different view as well not just only on the song just generally as a singer but i think on the pacing part what i loved uh, what i love i remember i had a fight i remember not really a fight but i remember we, we didn't agree with another artist i was trying to produce back in the days i think it was um somewhere around 2006 7 or so and 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 this lady when she came to to my place I was studying staying in Pretoria at the time um i i i always had a problem that she would repeat lines even though she the spacing is fine but i just feel like you 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 she kept on uh, repeating the same well to put it in a street way uh, she kept on repeating the same rave yeah well the last one yeah yeah but it's like the avela the line so like the avela the line da 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 yeah what i no no sense is quiet or because um I, I, you know and unfortunately the 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 project was called off because i had to tell her i, I think nile nile ndebe ngizam ngisho bazalwan let's let's try let, if you want us to review honestly we need people who are strong in the lord because we are going to really expose other things um and and we for now we are choosing to stay away from from local from local music unless you give us a go ahead but we feel like ish, it's a quite a very sensitive vibe and it's constructive um uh, uh i don't know what but i just feel like people um they should pay attention to the 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 the, the pacing thing it's it's quite a, a key thing and and obviously i think sorry to interrupt you and and for me the the thing is that that always surprises me whenever you go into a recording you have at least 3 weeks to prep up for that so if you can just record your lines for yourself 
and plan them out, space them out and know that, you know, oh, when I come to this verse, I'm um, only going to sing every second bar. When I come to this one, and this is my big one, I'm going to put it here. There. So just just be intentional about it. Don't, 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 don't assume when you get to the show, it's going to work out. It doesn't work like that. Uh, mm. The point of us having a rehearsal is just for that, so that you plan it out. Um, because really, it, 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 tends to, it tends to fall by the wayside very quickly. Yeah, and, and, uh, and just there, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm looking at comments here. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, they are quite moving. Um, um, there's some, someone mentioned something that, that, that I've, 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 I've made note of and I've told someone not to do it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, my preference, my preference, obviously, I, I, I sometimes, I, I think it depends with, with where the mood is of the song as well, where, where we are in terms of volume, um, a treatment and all of that. Mm -hmm. I, this thing of saying, the, the, and the Bible says, and, and the Bible says, John was mentioning the... <laughs> sometimes just distract my vibe, you know, um, it throws me off because I'm not sure whether your Bible says it's supposed to be in tune or you were talking and then if you so I'm, I'm told, and, and the Bible says, Lord, you are, Lord, you are, and then the Bible says, oh, dry, oh, 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 but that's it. To no, no, no. To be, to be honest, uh, uh, hey, and Murolo, I think you should come in. The, the talking in a song, guys, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a gig on its own. So, um, if you haven't transcribed it and if you haven't figured it out, uh, I encourage you to rehearse it before you do it, uh, because there, there's all those details, like, like you're saying. The mood of where we are determines how you'll speak and how you'll sound in the mood and, and, and the things you choose to say because some people say some shocking things that catch you off guard uh, on stage. So if you haven't figured it out, there, there are people who really do it well. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Kirk being the obvious one and, and people like Marvin Sepp. Marvin Sepp speaks in a song and it just makes sense. I remember the classical one who used to be the legendary one who used to kill it was Jimmy Swaggart. Jimmy Swaggart yeah. would just replace a verse oh, and speak oh, it instead oh, of sing it. And you would just feel a thing and he would oh. throw a laugh somewhere in there and the laugh was in context. So it's, it's like he checks everything to the T, even the laugh. So I think if, if you, had, uh, you don't have the, the tonality for it, uh, if you don't have the the accent for it. And I don't, uh, it's not simply an English thing. Even if it's a vernacular song, there's a, there's a certain way you accentuate your words to just put weight to the word. And there's certain ways that you can speak and it just capitulate the whole thing, no matter how beautiful your point might be. So I would encourage people to, to, to if you have something to say and you're not a strong speaker in a musical context, speak before the song starts and then when you're done we will start the click and then from there keep quiet and and let everything happen because it's a it's a it's a whole genre on its own it needs its own special attention you must learn it figure it out and and find the key there's a key to it oh there's a key baba <laughs> oh, there's a key <laughs> <laughs> you know what's the hardest thing here is is because I think I'm, I'm supposed to be quiet because I'm an artist as well. I sing, I get on stage. <laughs> I might say some of these things that I'm disagreeing with as well. I might, <laughs> but we are all growing, Barcelona. We are all headed somewhere. So we'll, we'll, we'll get there. But you, you, ish, ish. I just feel like, I just feel like um, uh there's this transcribing thing. There's this transcribing thing. This uh, maybe I would say phrase it in this way. There's a way that other people check songs and they check everything. You remember Keke back in the days? Yeah, a prophet, prophet, prophet Keke. He said back in the days. Um, I was traveling. I was traveling. 
I, I wrote this song when I was traveling from Swaziland to South Africa, and I wrote this song in the middle of. So you, remember, you remember the thing? I don't remember how you phrased it, but um, there's this telling of stories, and then and then someone would check it and steal it, and then and then they try to put it on their songs, and they don't know that we are there. We are visiting, sitting at the back. And then the person will hit you with a very same lament. I wrote this song when I was driving from Bulukwane to, and I can hear with man, I but this is so cake, man. Uh, is this? Yeah, I'm not saying that now you wouldn't have that same experience of writing a song, traveling from somewhere, but I just feel like sometimes we tend to overcheck and and steal from there and and put it here and just change one line or change one word or whatever, you know. Um, it's a discussion for another day, hey? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a dis- <laughs> it's a discussion for another day. But yeah, I think we've exhausted this one. Lebu, we Yeah, I, I wanted to I wanted to quickly pass through uh, the whole pacing thing, you know. Yeah. Whereby when we we're talking about the little singer, how how she started off and where she ended up being, you know, I mean, when she starts singing in the beginning, you wouldn't tell that she would be going to such an octave at the end and uh, doing all those uh, amazing uh, lies, <laughs> raves, <laughs> to say. <laughs> uh, but I, I think this also, um, this also apply to even the musicians. Um, one, of, one of the things that we always uh, get to experience is that everyone always goes on stage with an attitude of, I'm about to kill it. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to show them, you know, um, it's a good, it's a good spirit. It's a good attitude, you know, a good attitude to have. Um, if you listen to how these guys played on this record, I mean, these are, these are greatest musicians. They can play all these amazing chords that uh, one only dreams of. And on this record, they played everything that is only necessary to the song. So it's the same thing that we were talking about the last time um, about production is that uh, you give the song what it requires. You give the song what it needs, nothing less and nothing more. You, know? um, you, you hear how they build up the song. The piano player, he's a very strong piano player. This, the guys that are playing here, it's your Philip Fista, those who know Philip Fista from uh, Fred Hammond, uh, musical director and producer. Uh, Kelvin Rogers is there as well. These are great artists, but you can't even pick up, pick it up that it's actually them if you don't know. And, and they, they, did, they did so much to this song that they didn't overplay. They didn't overplay. Sometimes we get we get in a position whereby we feel like we want to show off because maybe this is a live recording and someone is going to listen to it for the next 10 years. So you would feel obliged to play all the notes as much as possible. And that would mess up the mood of the song, the nature of the song. And I think for us as producers and musicians, that's something we need to always try and avoid as we grow. Um, yeah. And one other thing is that, yeah, one other thing is this song, guys, uh, <laughs> this song was released in 2015. So this was five years ago. All this that we are talking about. The song that we just listened and, to. Yes, this was released in 2015. Mm. I was telling myself today that uh, I actually know this uh, this this lady. Uh, it's just that I was focused on my other songs. There, there's, there's a couple of songs that I decided to take as my favorite. You know, and not knowing that there's this song as well, which is amazing, amazing in this album. It was released in 2015. And and when you listen to it, you can even hear that you can still listen to it in the next 5 to 10, 20 years without it losing uh, substance, without it losing that quality. So which is something that we must all learn in our productions uh, as musicians and music producers and singers, you know, so that when we put something together, we need to put it together in such a way that we know when we play it five years down the line, it's something that we can, we're going to be proud of. And yeah. even 10 years, 20, 25 years, you know, because even the lyrical content carries you through. I mean, the lyrical content is, you know, it's amazing. 
Yeah. Uh, so all things are aligning from production to lyrical content. Yeah. And uh, and uh, again, uh, again, again, again. As I close this, as I close this discussion now, uh, we've taken an hour on this thing. So, uh, my, my fellow, my fellow younger producers and younger keyboard players who are still coming into the game, I think the biggest thing, or just generally, just generally, everyone, guys, I just feel like the talking, the talking before the song, we are not saying is 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 wrong. Uh, it's just that now, for it to be amazing, there's a collective of things that need to happen while the person is talking. Um, uh, there could be a nice pad and a nice piano, just in here, you know, a nice, a nice thing underneath, um, um, it, which makes the whole thing amazing and and spiritual and moving. So sometimes now you you feel that if I'm invited and I get on stage, I want to talk. I know that Joe's immediately is going to have a nice one volume, a beautiful volume where you can hear the piano and you can hear me very well. We are not distracting each other. And the person who's sitting down can hear this. And then over and above, there's a nice pad underneath, uh, just layering. We'll talk to keyboard players later on. It's very important. It's very key as well uh, as a keyboard player to be very sensitive to to the mood, to the mood as well. Because sometimes we figure in the way and and other people are just trying to show off. If I some of some of the places where I've went alone without you guys, I've I felt like some musicians when they see you that you are sitting down and you are visiting, and they they forget that there's someone talking on stage. They just want to show everything so that by the time the service ends, I must book them for a gig, which I don't have. So mood is everything we are coming to to those discussions later um um yeah if volume let's check volume as well let's check volume it, there's 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 a whole lot of things so we're still going to break them down to other days obviously uh as we go i think friday uh, friday we're having a nice a nice session i think friday we're having a nice session um where we will touch on these as well the mood the spirit the vibe you know, master stage, we are all working. Let everyone focus on their instruments uh, and, and check the vibe. I, I remember the other year I was, okay, let's leave it. I said the other day, I said the other day in Jan, I posted something that was funny. I I posted, you see someone, right, uh, singing a song. Um, I've searched all over, could find nobody. Uh, I've looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, but the person doesn't have a passport at that time. But we'll leave it for the spiritual day. Uh, Joyce, I know you'll align us on that one. But um, let's go to questions. It's question time. Uh, it's question time. It's blessing time. It's, <laughs> it's anointing time. So, guys, uh, 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 just so you know, we're going to go back. Uh, some of the things, obviously, we touched them as we were reviewing. Some of them are subjects on other days where we'll be talking about them. So don't worry, we'll come back. Stay online all the time. The song that we reviewed is Tiff, Tiff Joy. It's Tiff Joy. The name of the song is You Are. That's what we reviewed today. We love the song. It's a beautiful song. Um yeah, Aroni, hit me up with the first question. Guys, we're going to questions now. Throw in your questions. Let's go. First question is, uh, hey, I'm not seeing here, 21. Okay, oh. Nkosi Eric, Nkosi underscore Eric. Evening, gentlemen. Great job you are doing. My question is, how do you guys go about creating arrangements for songs? Because often we hear intros arrangements within the song, and outros which are not in relation with the core of the music. Um, I think we've answered this. We've answered this when we were reviewing uh, uh, the song as well. Um, um, I think uh, I, I I would, let's make it short. Let's make it short because we spoke about it in the review. I think um, it, it goes, I feel, and I think I know that it goes with age. It goes with age when you are, when you are, this is your first time doing this thing and you're still growing in arranging and, and, and producing and all of that. Generally people tend to, um, 
uh, wanting to prove a point which now have arrived i uh, look we we know all those projects that uh, are done with that thinking where you can hear with hey, this person uh, is so long denied where he's he he's he has really he's been he's been looking for this for this opportunity all his life so and now he has found it and it's time for everyone to see what i'm capable of so um it is very important to know the song it is very important that your intro says something about the song or you are picking up a line from a song within the song a melody and you're making it an intro and all of that sometimes guys you don't need the intro you just don't need the intro you just need a key nje as umuntu avela bambu one uvele enkulu nje ngihlanze eh angena ma voices kube mnandi kube arrange kube busy kube busy then maybe you need the ending sometimes you don't need the intros uh uh that's over producing and over on all of that i remember someone asked a question which is a some is a such a thing that's that's called over producing yes there is where you have put everything that you have learned over the past 6 months and you are putting it in one song or the past 12 years so funfa ka yonke into kune intro when you go to the chorus there's an arrangement when you go to the bridge there's a thing there when we get out of the bridge there's a thing there you know there's a thing everywhere by the time we end the song university is the thing song you know there's something somewhere and imoya aitobelani what's your take lab or josie or label on overproducing label what's your take on overproducing yeah um <laughs> i think for, for me because of the experience that i have so far i've i've got to learn a lot from my mistakes um there's albums that i produced that i worked on as well um where by yo you know when you when you're listening to a project uh, three, four years later and you're thinking yo wasn't there anyone who could just tell me to stop it <laughs> yeah. um and there's also uh, those popular projects even now that people love so much and my, myself i'm sitting there i'm thinking yo that was too much that was unnecessary because as you go, as as i grow um one of the things that i tend to do is um is to check whether i'm actually growing or not from the uh, previous position i was i was in or the musicality level i was at whether there's been a change or not because i think one of the biggest tricky thing is if you don't check whether you are growing or not you might remain uh, stagnant for for a while and with no one to to come to you and say to you hey bro ngathi ah uh, you are not checking anymore you are leaking a bit you know um so over producing and it's it's one of the things that kills projects um when you go to most of these uh, major labels i think with them <laughs> because there's no strings attached they would usually say it to you straight this album is not working this album there's just so much going on um i learned something when i was doing a lot of secular music where by i would get into the studio with a uh, shorter um and one of the things that he would say to me cuz i would get in and i would say okay play any play any progression hey baba i would hit like minor major you know and couple it with couple of uh, modes just passing through and he would say hey my brother we won't be able to sell <laughs> we won't be able to sell with this and this is going to kill our business cuz now already you are saying too much but besides the whole thing of selling now you are overplaying at the time we're dealing with overplay because i'm a piano player uh, so i would play so many things that wouldn't make sense and bengi beng pathaka ga when he would say let's just play these two chords and then i will send you the final product production tomorrow and the following day when he sends me the final product with those two chords that i played after subtracting majority of my chords the song would be could be feeling a bit empty for me and i'm like ah but this song needed 1 2 and 3 and 4 you know and then 6 months later the song is released is doing well one of the things now that i'm realizing at the time is that the production of the song has less 
one of the things that we should learn is that having less, that's what I would always say, <laughs> less is more sometimes, you know, more is less and stuff like that, you know, I forgot how the saying goes. Um, but now it becomes easy to the ear because now there is less in the music, the production, there isn't anything that is uh, contradicting with the frequency of how he, how people hear the music. The amount, if you you doing a song and you have about 10 sounds already that are just fuzzy sounds or sore sounds, already you having you have to deal with frequencies whereby we have to check in South Africa, uh, the ear of people decide how is it, how do they consume music? Um, what is it that they understand better? And how do they even get to hear the message better? Do they hear the message better when there's more arrangements in a music or less? Mm -hmm. Or do they hear message better when there's more lyrical content put together or when there's just few. So now one has to just find a balance every time. So there's a lot of analysis, a back and forth analysis that goes between the production and the consumer, the person who's buying the music. Yeah. Yeah. Jose, I'm not giving you, a, I'm not giving you a chance. Let's move, let's move to the next question. Uh, because I, yeah, I've got a feeling that you are going to stretch this to another level, but I... I, I said two sentences, though. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, sentences, if it's going to be two sentences, then it's cool. Or else I'm going to mute the mic. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I think uh, for me, um, I'm, not, I'm not too big on uh, determining what, who, what is overproduction or what's not. There's just two things that I learned that helped me in my production. The first one is... I discovered that something that sounds nice when I play it does not automatically sound nice when somebody hear it, hears it and just learning to know the difference. The things I enjoy playing, but that people don't enjoy hearing. Uh, and then the second one is always remember or always ask yourself, are you producing the song or are you producing the band? Uh, and, and, and that helps you to kind of manage your priorities because sometimes you prioritize band arrangements and all these things at the expense of the song itself. So I think those are two sentences <laughs> with support, with some stories. Okay, uh, I'm giving I'm giving this I'm giving this to you quickly. Uh, just hit it quickly. Koketo mol mol my brother. Um, um, the question is. If there is one thing we as the general public um, and beneficiaries of these sessions could do to strengthen support you, your ministry's work, what would it be? Okay, I think this is related to the producer's talk, ne? am I right? Mm. Okay, all right, so we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. I thought it was a continuation to something that we were talking about. Okay, cool. Uh, there isn't a question down there. There isn't a question there. Um, uh, 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 Tia Makudu, um, my question is a producer. Do you, uh, my question is a producer? Do you do you make the final product on your own personal feel, or you consider what the artist desire? Did we didn't we respond to this somewhere early in episode one? Ne? Yeah, we do touched wanna, on it. Do you want to touch on it? Uh, but I think we 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 did. Uh, Makudu, go to episode one. Uh, I think it's uh, one minute and thirty something. Just check it out on on episode one, and uh, uh, we we are trying not to. Um... Okay, cool. Let's go to the next question. Let's go to the next question. Um, hi, is all you guys work? Hi, as all you you. Hi, as all you guys. Okay, work with major artists like Pastor Benjamin Dube, uh, Pastor Jabu, and et cetera. How does it feel? How does it feel like? And is it not hectic or difficult? Well, I mean, I work with up and coming artists. So, uh, Josie? <laughs> now I work with up and coming artists now. So. Okay. Well, I... <laughs> I'm saying up and coming. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, 
I think they mentioned Bishop Benjamin. I work with him. Uh, yeah. it's, it's really, it's really a, a chilled environment, man. He's, he's easygoing. He doesn't have a lot of issues. Um, it's always interesting for me because obviously we, we come from two distinctly different eras and, and I, I grew up listening to him. So it's a, it's, it's a cool experience because now, um, I have a I have a perspective to his sound, but I also get fascinated by how he sees stuff, and it's 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 a uh, it's it's not an overwhelming place. You don't feel like you're working with someone who's been in the game for over thirty years. The other day, he he was telling me I was asking him about Dave Siegel, his mixing engineer, mm. how long they've been working together, and he says they first started working together I think around nineteen eighty eight. They were doing their first mixing session. And 1988, uh, in the let me not tell you where I was, but you know when you look at all that that detail and how far he's come and all the material he's written and yeah it it, it when you're in the room with him it doesn't feel like you're in the you're in the room with someone who's done that much and generally that's what I find with most people that I find myself work with, working with. Uh, lately, I've been, I did some work with Custom Tunes in Number. Same thing, chilled. It's like, I mean, same story. <laughs> I mean, he's the one of the people who inspired me to play piano. And, but when you're in the room with him, it, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like I'm with Crowley. It's, <clears throat> but, uh, it's not, they're, they're all very chilled. Generally, and this is what's interesting, most of the time, the artists that will give you an attitude and that are horrible to work with are the ones who have not done much. And I don't know where it comes from because I remember uh, an artist who I'll leave unnamed to protect the guilty who just <laughs> showed up at a gig. And I was with Le, we're playing there, and she just became very big on that stage. And, and I wasn't emotionally prepared for that. But it's, it's weird. The, the higher up an artist has gone, the more chilled I find they become. Um, but some, the younger ones still have insecurities that make them become weird. So in my experience, working with these legendary artists, very chilled people. Yeah, uh, I think for me, one of the things I love more than anything, I think with the ones that I work with or that I've worked with is 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 that reciprocity energy kind of thing that is happening where where, where this person has so much information um, uh, in the production, maybe a production skill and whatnot. And at that time, I'm bringing the new fresh sound and arrangements and all of that. I think the engagement that and the flow in the in the studio where 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 the vibe is like okay let me hear what are you thinking okay this is how i've been doing it all these years so i love the energy and the discussions some so there's a quote quincy said love love if if you're gonna work for one hour love two hours um most of them with me we we spend time talking and getting the energy getting the energy right and the vibe i think a rehearsal for me a studio or a session or any production it, for me, it must start from talking. We must just talk and get the energies right. Lock. Once we sit on the piano, we just need 15 minutes because we've already done the rehearsals by just talking. And most of my rehearsals and studios and my projects, that's how they are. And I've, I've always loved them like that. And and yeah, I, 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 I seriously get bored when I get to a rehearsal and the rehearsal is quiet and there's only one person speaking. Um, 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 not, 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 not... I think Nani is on team. I just get seriously frustrated. I just feel like the results should be chilled. I must ask, how are you? How how was li how's life? Hey, do you have data? And just laugh, get the energies right. Once the mood and the vibe in the rehearsal is good, I think you guys produce um, uh, good results. And again, um, uh, to those who are thinking and to those who are thinking inwardly and would never say a thing, Ni be careful again. and you start thinking. Also, uh, 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 maybe this is why this one, uh, this one in his rehearsal is always quiet and strict, and da 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 da, and he's selling more. And uh, your rehearsal, your productions are not selling. Numbers don't lie. I think we had Monday when Lindran Kiza was here. 
numbers don't lie don't don't look at other things and and assume that because they talk a lot and they are not selling we can really get companies to give us uh, numbers some of you will be shocked but hey we are having a good time thank you so much guys we're seeing all the likes and i know let me rebuke the spirit there's a spirit of people who are coming here just to, to they're just coming here for comments and i can see there's a party going on guys please we are here let's talk here and stop this party because now we also want to be there we also want to respond to others who are crossing the line but now we can't because there's other people who are really who really want to receive um the vibes and and all this information that we're giving here so please let's focus let's focus uh leave these comments please uh next aaron question. next question okay right um okay so there's two oh it's one 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 long question comment uh tabang underscore rampo looking rampo looking i said it right now rampo looking yes, you did thank you very much guys for the valuable information you have shared with us so far my question is posed to all three of you including this up oh that was yesterday that was a uh, monday né? what personal what personal sacrifices do did you have to make in order to push your success and mastery of your craft in this challenging industry of music labs yes sir um personal sacrifices <laughs> yo my brother <laughs> um i i wouldn't say I wouldn't specify on personal sacrifices um really but but I think so far where I'm coming from um and I, I I'm I'm married now which is which is great I'm loving it um <laughs> but also uh, coming to this point where I am being a music producer being a musician um uh I I mean I would find myself in a position whereby I'm working almost 18 hours a day <laughs> and a day only has 24 hours. And at a time I was young and I noticed that this thing, man, I'm doing so much, I'm putting so much into it that, and then I'm neglecting the personal aspects, my personal life, my personal life, whereby I was busy, busy building up my, my personal relationship, my love relationship. And, you know, when you start seeing that, hey, you are losing so much on the other side, the one side is winning, which is the music side, you know, and that's when you realize, hey, things are not balanced, things are not balanced, and obviously you get to sort it out, which is why I think right now, as where I am, I'm in a better place, I'm in a better place, because I had to now say to myself, there's things that, I'm, that I can do without, in order for me to balance my, my life outside of music. Um, it's not every gig that you have to take, it's not every TV show or a studio session that one has to do, especially when you sit down and you calculate, okay, you need money, you, you need to make connections. But now every time you get, a, you get a booking or a call from someone or an email from someone for work, one has to always think, how much time is this going to take? How much time am I going to invest in this? And what am I getting out of this? And if, if I'm going to uh, spend the next three months working on a project, how much time am I giving to my family? I'm mentioning this because I have noticed a, a musician, so another musician was, uh, was asking me the same thing about uh, trying to manage your, your personal life and your music life. You, know? you need to find a way to, to, to put together a balance whereby there's gigs that you will have to sacrifice. There's people that you might not just have to work with because you are trying to protect uh, your your personal lifestyle, which is outside of music. Whereby you can easily, someone can easily say, "Come, let's do a gig uh, Monday to Saturday," 
for the next three months, we waking from 6 a.m. We're knocking off at 10 a at 10 p.m. Uh, we're doing multiple sets. It's good money. When you look at it, you're thinking it's good money. Hey, but now if I'm gonna spend the next three months in this, that means uh, my family is gonna suffer. So the question is, what do you sacrifice in that? Either. And you can only live by music alone. Uh, <laughs> so one has to find a balance so that at the end, your partners, your family members, your siblings, they don't get to resent uh, your life for music or they don't get to resent your music they get to support you and love you because you are finding a balance into that. Okay, for the sake of time, let's move. Next question. <clears throat> yes. Donkey F or, okay. Donkey F or farm. So I'm not sure whether it's the real name or it's a stage name. <laughs> His name is Tebo. His real name is Tebo. <laughs> okay. In various industries, we have what we call competitors. Understanding your competitor helps with being comp competitive in the market and also increasing your market share. Do you also, as musicians, producers, have competitors within the industry? If so, how do you relate to them from competitiveness perspective? Josie, I want to give that one to you. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm the best person to answer it. Uh, well, the first reason is I am not very entrepreneurial from, from, I think from a, from an early age, I, I, I am more, I am a feeling type of person. If it feels right, I do it. So I'm not, I'm not conscious of what's happening and who's doing what and are they doing well? Should I copy what they're doing or should I review? So um, I'm sure there are, there, there possibly are competitors in our space, but I'm, I'm not conscious of it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about who's in competition. Uh, for me, it's like, if, if somebody needed an album done and, and they call Koli and not call me, it's, I, it's not, I don't see that as, oh, my competitor is doing well. Uh, what is he doing right? Can I fix it? Uh, it's, I, I am, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't think I'm the best one to answer it. I'm just, I'm just laid back, man. I'm, I'm feeling, if it feels right, I'll do it. If it doesn't, I'm never, I'm never thinking about the, the competitive advantages and I'm not, I'm never thinking about how to tom dominate a space and I'm not, I'm never thinking about uh, how to be, even actually from from the beginning, when I started picking up an instrument, I've never thought of being the best anything anywhere. And uh, and and it's probably because the environment where I came from, where where I come from, I was the only person playing piano. So I was the best piano player by virtue of there being no other person playing. So I've never come up in an environment where I was competing to be at the top. So the same thing just just kept following me and and that's why i'm easy i'm i'm like uh one of one of the things i always do whenever i have meetings with clients is, is i'll tell you oh yeah this is how much it costs but look there's a lot of other people who can do it just as well as i can and probably for a lot less maybe you should consider them and in some instances i actually give them numbers if they're like yeah who are those people i'll be like yeah call these these people they they're just as good as I am, or if not better. And so I'm not I'm not entrepreneurial. So that that's my that's my limitation, I guess. I don't know if I'm the best person to answer this. I I'm not aware of who who I'm competing with, because I don't think I'm competing with anyone. Yeah, I think I think Nami. I um. If if I were to attempt to answer it, I might uh. Um, other people might not feel um, I've got a feeling that people might hear things that I'm not hearing when I speak yeah, Mo? and I'm going to realize later with the, hey, I've been shooting bullets all together um, um, I, I think one, one of the decisions I took a long time ago was I, I listened less to, 
to to other local producers, uh, meaning their productions. I I I try not to listen to a lot. I listen to hot songs. If I open my iTunes and I see that there's three four songs that are trending, then I can I then I listen. But generally, in general, I I have always stayed away. I'm just making examples like like your 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 joy, us, your spirit of praise, all the albums that are there that are, are, are big and are happening. I always stay away from 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 listening to them, and not because I don't like them, because I've got a, a, a photographic memory or ear, if I may, if I may put it that way, that way. My my ear records, and when I go into my production space, a whole lot of things that I've been singing or whatever they come back. So I choose not to to listen to other productions because then I feel like when I go into my production space, I might create an intro or create an arrangement and it's someone else's or there's a cousin out there. So I choose not to 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 listen to um, local Gakulu and I listen more even international. I stay away from listening to gospel. I listen to other things. I listen to world music most of the time. I don't listen to to gospel that much uh, i only check gospel when i hear there's a there's a hit somewhere so i want to hear you know how they got it right so i'm not sure if i'm answering the question but you know, personally um i don't think i'll be able to answer that question as well uh, without yeah yeah cousins there's too many cousins so you find yourself later uh, you know next question aaron Wait, wait, I command. I don't think I, I no, 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 no. The command is out of order, man. My questions are okay. I with long follow, uh, only so long denied, but he's a friend of mine, so I can speak anyhow. So. <laughs> Yo, oh, qu questions. No, I think my biggest problem with him, he questions, he answers, he questions, he... then he's got a breach within the, the question, then I relax, eh? and then and come back again with the last part. So let's go. For years, I think. We've been on, on the receiving end with regards to the, to the style and direction in which goes, uh, contemporary gospel music is going. And this is mostly from the West. Of course, this, yeah, what, what he just answered and then and, and he just asked and then, yeah. Of course, of course, this goes beyond just the music. There's geopolitics involved. Am I, did I say that word right? My question then is, what is there that we can work on, package and send to the global market that will distinctively be a South African sound that can, in and all of itself, change the style and direction of the gospel music globally? So that's question one there. Ne? What, is, what, what is there that we can work on, package, send to the global market that will distinctively be a South African sound that can in and of itself change the style and direction of gospel music globally. Also, is this an artistic ash okay or artistic issue? Please bring it back. Okay, uh, did you hear the first question? I think try and bring it back because it's a it's an essay. So uh, you know, when we answer, we we answer as we read the question. <laughs> now must just chill, man. <laughs> I think we must invite him because I know he's got so he's got a he's got another view. That's why he's got a gospel. I don't I don't um, get hold of him. Can you get hold of him and bring him in here now? Uh, you know, uh, can we move to another easier question, shorter one? I, I know you can call him. Can you call him and find out if he's available to do this thing? Uh, let me let me get hold of him. It's fine. Let's move to the next question. Yeah, that was the last question. Unless you have questions on your own. Okay. Um, um, yeah. I think I think we've touched on all of them. Let me double check on the Instagram. I think we we've 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 screen much pretty much everything. I don't think we have questions left. Um, thank you guys so much for all the questions that you send even during the day and the comments and the likes and the following of the page. Thank you so much. We truly appreciate it. Uh, let's double check there. No, there isn't. 
I don't think we have Android messages. I don't know if my my it looks like my my okay my screen is acting up. Um okay, I'm not seeing any questions. I don't know if I'm looking right, but I don't think there's other any questions that we left. Anyways, guys, it's already 11 o'clock. I think we should wrap it up somewhere. Are you finding him or should we just move on and um and try and break the question into pieces. What's your take, Josie? Yeah, yeah, we can have a go at the question. Uh, I okay, I let's. I, get, I think I understand the question. Okay, I uh, see the second one. But I don't. Please bring back the question. Oh, Shem, yeah, sorry. There's a question yeah, just, just before just before we go back to the question. Aaron, just hold it. Um, uh, so my question, my question to you guys was uh, one. I don't know if he's saying one. First, you have been called to play at an event. You get your own band and don't do it. Would you guys still play if the artist comes on the day of the show and say, they cannot afford the backline that you guys need and he or she has paid you guys already but cannot afford the tech rider in short level it's you that has a lot of que- uh, keyboards uh what's your take <laughs> it's unacceptable <laughs> totally unacceptable and i you know what uh, yeah, you know, I think the trickiest thing for me is in most of uh, our productions, I'm always the person that finds problems because, yeah, I would ask for a for a Coke Chronos 2 and they would bring a Coke Chronos X. Uh, for me, there's a huge difference, but because uh, they would think uh, if we couldn't afford the... Chronos 2 because it's a new model uh, probably that the backline company is supplying it supplying it it's it's charging a bit more for that um, I, I go through all of that um, another experience that I had was I traveled from here to from Pretoria to to a place in Limpopo which is about four hours drive and they had assured me that backline is sorted I showed me backline is sorted, so I'm not bringing anything. I'm not going there with anything. I'm just me and my backpack uh, with my clothes, you know. Uh, when I got there, when I saw on stage, there wasn't even a single keyboard for me. When I get there, the artist is explaining, it's like, hey, bro, man, uh, H, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding, so your keyboards are not here. And I'm calling... I'm calling uh, my supplier who, uh, K- KJB Productions. I'm like, hey, Baba, can, what happened to those people? He's like, ah, no, those people didn't pay. So as a result, that's why there's no backline there. So, so already at the time, I'm calculating two things. Now I have to calculate the relationship I have with the, ta- uh, the artist, which becomes an issue now. I can't drop him now because already I have a very close relationship with him. Now I can't dis- I can't disappoint him. You know that's another thing that's made that makes it tricky. Uh, secondly, I have traveled a long distance. I've left my family and I can't just sit there and not do anything. And then when this client of mine already has done so much, even though he hasn't agreed to. <laughs> So he couldn't manage to afford the, uh, the the tech rider. So which goes back for me to the fact that uh, we were talking about the communication. The question is, when did the person know that they want to afford, the, the, they can't afford tech rider? Is it on the day or a week before? And how, how, how did it come about that they're only telling you on the day? Joseph, I think you remember you actually mentioned this again as well. Um, that makes it tricky, Bazalwani. Uh, that's make that makes it tricky. For me, when I don't have the necessary backline, that makes it difficult for me to give you the level of performance you're expecting from me. 
it makes it tricky for me to really um, put together everything that I had prepared for, for all the rehearsals and everything that you are paying me for. Already it's compromising the level of productivity on stage of which now it will affect your entire product. So for me, I would always say it's not best to really go on stage with, <laughs> with what you, you did not request for. Even though we have been on stages whereby the backline we requested was not there, but which is why it's important for us again to try and find ways to make use of what we have in a situation whereby we do not have a choice. But I mean, if you have a choice also to walk off stage <laughs> because the necessary equipment is not supplied, that's also another option to avoid embarrassing yourself because I'm also not the person who's willing to go on stage and try and learn a keyboard that I've never seen before and try and figure it out on stage while everyone is watching me and it becomes embarrassing to me and to the brand as well. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, are we closing here or are we taking, tackling that, that question quickly? Josie? Yeah, we can pass by it. Uh, let, let's go to it again, uh, Aaron. <clears throat> oh, uh, where's the previous one? You lost it. No, it's the same one. No, I'm just saying the bigger, the bigger view. Oh, so the bigger view. Okay. Yeah, my my eyes uh, are challenged. <laughs> okay, so let's go back. Let's go back again. Um, so the question, the question started there, if you remember, what is there that we can work on, package and send to the global market that will distinctively uh, be a South African sound that can in and of itself change the style and direction of gospel music globally? Also, is this an artistic issue or a marketing issue or even both? As in, we have the product already, we just need to market it better. Can you answer that question? Yeah, uh, I have a view on that. Um, so okay, so I think, yeah. Uh, bring back the question. I think the question continues as it's a, it's a, there's a flow as well. It's a two part. Yeah, there's a flow. Yeah, there's a flow to the, the second part. Since think, we, since we sort of have the same influences, even our, I'm losing a part there, Aaron. I think that's why he opened that other one because. Oh, please, okay, please go back to that other one, again. I'll, I'll try and and zoom in. Um, since we sort, we sort of have the same influences, even our approach to music and projects reflects these influences. If you listen to one project, you sort of have a glimpse of 75 to 80% of the work out there. What can artists do that could make them stand out artistically without following what's trending at this time? I'm gonna jump in on that second one later. Uh, I think um, um, Josie can go. Cool. Um, uh, the first one, I think it's essentially uh, just trying to make sense of why our South African music is not cutting through on a global platform. Um, I think it's a combination of factors, but one of our biggest limitations, I think as a country is like you said, we have a Western influence and consequently, what that has done for us, which is a great disservice. And I think it probably has something to do with apartheid. I'm not sure. But we have little confidence in our native sounds. And we are always pursuing uh, or we place a higher premium on other sounds. And I, I pick it up a lot with most of the artists that want to do productions. Most people think they are better off doing contemporary gospel than they are doing traditional gospel. And and you can see that hear the energy they have towards it, even though they do well with traditional native South African sounds, but they, they just have a bit of a distaste for it. So I think the first problem we have is a confidence in our traditional sound, in our South African sound. And I think we have an amazing, an amazing sound which can stand its ground on a clo global market. 
But I think the second limitation we probably might have is we haven't strengthened our production quality. Uh, so in a sense, I feel like what we could do is that what before we think of shipping our product, we could maybe do better with how we, we package it. Like you said, it's a packaging thing. If we could find a way to up the game, it's something Lulu and I keep talking about. What, what if we did a purely South African sounding product and got it on a, on a proper international mix? You see, like what, what the Nigerians are doing. I mean, if you listen to uh, people like Davido, all those guys who are doing Afrobeat, the mixes are global. So that's the second thing we, we get a limitation on. When, when we're doing a South African product, we don't make a fuss about making the production quality to be at that level. And I think the other thing that we should also consider is perhaps fusing, and this is an idea Lulu used to say, uh, fusing our authentic South African sound, but also fusing it with English lyrics, just so that you have a, a bigger reach, so that when somebody loves it, they can at least follow what you're saying in some sense. I think that could also help out, even though you still, you see like what Tim Godfrey did with that feature with uh, Travis Green, um, even though the song is has a Nigerian chorus, but at the core of it, you can follow the idea of the context of where the song is. So I think in addition to marketing, uh, even though I don't think it's entirely limited to marketing, because right now in the chat, uh, Polly just mentioned that people from Texas, Tanzania, and, and different parts of the globe, there was somebody from Italy at some point. So it means we have the reach to get to people in every part of the world. Our limitation right now is that our packaging is not where it should be, in my estimation. Now, of course, I could be wrong. But I think we, the key thing, the main one, we need more confidence in what we have. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like Moses carrying a rod and not knowing that it, it has the capacity to open oceans. And so I think if we could start seeing it from that perspective, that would be the first step to push us in the right direction. Mm. Okay. Uh, I think let me leave let me leave my part to uh, another day. But uh, what I wanted to say, I'll just paraphrase it quickly, is that we uh, maybe in a local league we have we have we have our issues, Nje, um That if if someone releases an album and the album works and it hits platinum and and it's trending, and then uh, and then we're gonna hear a lot of albums that are following up that are exactly that. I remember when we spoke about Tom's the other day that uh, I think Sandile Le, Sandy made uh, a, a funny comment as well when he was shooting, doing the TV thing. He felt like there was like probably 17 episodes that he did that all the songs had Tom's. Uh, and he, to an extent where he said, guys, thank you. There are not Tom's, the Tom's are, not, are no longer available today. <laughs> so we'll see that. <laughs> <laughs> when you get to every song that starts, boom, doom, 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 and then the next one, doom, 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 the next one, doom, 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 the whole day we are playing toms. But generally, in general, most Africans we've got an issue of our phone, not wanting to start and stand out and do a new fresh thing and just go in as you feel. All of you, most of people are waiting for someone to do something that works. And then if it sells, then everyone does it. But I think it's a problem that we've always had even back then. I just don't want to mention that gender because now some of the people who are doing it and, and were successful after are my close friends. But Jay, I think find your, find your sound, find your corner, stick to it, be happy with it, improvise whatever you want to tweak and whatnot, but stay away uh, if it's not your sound. Uh, because now you find a person like uh, 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 Reginald, uh, one was this Regi Re Re Reginald Jabunkosi. I know his tone, and the next thing now he wants to do a Dr. Dumi song. Um, 
uh, yeah, it becomes a bit of a challenge now. I don't know, but I'm just throwing it out there. I'll just throw it. Last question, and we are closing, guys. One quick question, and I think how I how would, how I would love you, I love you guys to answer it. I want a, a yes or a no, and I know that is going to leave a whole lot of questions unanswered. I love the question. I want to leave it for other for other days. Here's the question. The question comes from Gamma. Gamaliel Matons. Would you take a booking to be part of a project a project produced by an upcoming producer or someone you regard as a junior or beginner producer? I need a yes or a no. Uh, because I feel like you are going to say no, but you're going to sound like you're saying yes because of the philosophical thing and you make it big and uh we might not get your your answer right. I just need a yes or a no. Discipline yourself. Don't explain label. Don't explain. Give me a straight answer. Would you do a project? Say again. I was saying, read the question again, Baba. Okay. Hmm. Question is, would you take a booking to be part of a project produced by an upcoming producer or someone uh, you regard as a junior or a beginner producer? Would you come and do the keyboards and be part of I've it? I've done that. Oh, you've, so, so your answer is yes? I've done that. Okay, sure. Josie? <laughs> can, I call, can I call Gamma and answer you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, I want to say... I w- <laughs> no. For the sake of the sta- for the sake of we are in the stadium. In the stadium, my friend. Also, also, I have explanations though. <laughs> explanations. I don't want explanations because that's where you cover up all your, your secrets and your <laughs> and your your yeah, your dirty no, loop. No, you know what the problem is? The difference between me and Lebo, and yeah. this is why my answer cannot be a straight. Uh, is that people don't book me, man. For uh, Whenever people call me, it's yeah. when they want me to produce or direct. I yeah. never get a call from people just saying, hey, man, come play piano for us. I don't get those calls. Whenever okay. I get a call, it's producing or directing, and it's probably recording. So it's, it's a, I don't know. But I but, guess it's a hypothetical question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the question the question is a fill in question, yeah. Bo? I hear you sound beautiful and you are talking about <laughs> you are talking about the past right now. I wonder yeah. how that says, would you, if you get a call tomorrow, would you? I'm not gonna get a call tomorrow, Bob. My phone will be <laughs> off tomorrow. <laughs> so so stadium, all the fans you are hearing, you can hear this. This is I knew that you guys would want to, you know, cover it up and 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 make it beautiful. My, it's a hard question, my brother. Yes or no, Joseph? Yes or no? It depends. Let's uh, put. Let's say the budget is nice. Let's no, say, no, not on the budget. Okay, <laughs> on the caller. <laughs> <laughs> We have to de- determine who's calling because who's calling as well is also a big deal. <laughs> yeah, the caller, yeah. my brother. Okay, so the answer is uh, yes and no. It all depends on the caller. Absolutely. Come, I hope we've answered you, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, let's 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 close it here. Uh, I. Oh, okay. Someone is asking me if I should answer the question. Um, I once called you and I had done nothing and you came. <laughs> yeah, that was, when was that again? 2012, 13 there. 20? Around 2012, 2013. <laughs> and you were gracious enough to come. <laughs> Yeah, my answer is. <laughs> I think my answer is no. Hey, 
<laughs> it doesn't depend. I think my answer is no. But I think what what happened between me and you and Lebu back then, specifically, you remember that thing we were doing, that gig we did at the school, and Sudisha was there as well. Yeah. Uh, you, I don't want to mention the artist because... Uh, uh, <laughs> but I think what was beautiful about that that gig specifically, it was... Um, I think it was more of a divine uh, God's anointing, God's uh, doing that we meet. Because if you remember, if you remember very well as well, we were still sort of like uh, learning each other's characters and trying to bond. The friendship was still fresh at the time again. Um, but I remember, I remember you saying to me, I remember there was a question. I remember asking you a question where I gave you an arrangement, an idea, and Lebu gave you an idea. And I remember someone else, I don't remember, what was was it Monet was playing bass? Who was playing bass? It was Calvin. Oh, it was Calvin. No, it was Peter, the one who came with another uh, arrange, uh, idea within what we were talking about. I don't remember whether we were doing the intro or whatnot. So, uh, all of us confused you. I remember that day we confused you with the, the, the ideas that we had because all of them were nice. Mm. But, and then I remember saying to you, okay, Sharp, Josie, you need to make a decision because you're the one that called us here. And still you were sort of like doubting, you were not sure at the time. And I said, make a decision, choose one. We are not taking offense here. We are all working here. So if this is working now and sounds right in your ear, I think somehow that day we taught you the power of deciding, Jay. Of making a decision in a reza, especially with Mona Bantu, maybe you at the time had names and 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 credits and whatnot. So I'm saying, uh, there there was a beautiful network energy that was happening. Uh, it worked out well. But now in 20, let's say maybe 2018, I think the past 10 years, I would say no. I would I would say no to that uh, uh, call. I think I'll just say no. I don't care who's the caller. Um, mm. Yeah, I just, I, I just think it's better if me and I'm called to to oversee and give other things. Uh, if if someone younger is calling me, rather call me just to oversee the production, maybe to advise and say, look, do this there, do this there. Um, but as for me, getting and besides, the wooden jeff, saying katele i piano jimina generally, he angi tande the way ule way tande na kord. So let's let's close, let's yeah, close. Let's close. Let's close, Let's please. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I've decided a long time ago. With, I, yeah. Well, look, the caller, uh, you can give the call, but um, we'll talk other things. Um, Thank you, guys. Thank you, Crotchet, Crotchet Music. Thank you, Paselia uh, Media. Thank you to um, uh, Ocreo. Uh, thank you to lt lt branding house thank you so much and thank you guys for tuning in um again it looks like these things i must change the poster it, it must say two hours because every time we are around uh two hours and uh, apologies to those who don't have data who have, have left as well um we will chop these things and put them we are there on youtube uh, instagram facebook uh stay tuned in tune in all the time as you send your questions um, we'll we'll answer them on the spot or answer them here. If we don't answer on the on the on the inboxes, please know that we have planned that we are going to answer them here. But we see all the questions. Uh, I know that maybe there's some that we've missed, but sorry about that. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you so much. Let's remember the song that we opened with, a beautiful song uh, by Tiff Joy. Uh, next session we will review another song. We are not sure whether when when will that be, but we will review we'll review songs and whatnot. So if you have questions and you want us to review maybe your song or whatnot here publicly, do so. Um, if you are strong, we are strong in the Lord. Bring it through. We will we will do it. Thank you so much. I know the comments. There's a party going on. Um, thank you. Uh, can we walk out with the same song?
And what I forgot to mention, the sneakers, the sneakers on this song are hot. Absolutely. 